place that she was accustomed to going. Even though just checking out a bargain wasn't against her nature, the shelves were full of old guitars and shotguns telling the stories of people before her who had been down on their luck and just needed a few bucks to get by, promising themselves to retrieve their prized possessions as soon as they were in a little better financial shape. It rarely happened. And the old pawn shop just collected more and more stuff, paying only a few dollars for former treasures of hard-up households. She knew that her story was different. The indignity of even finding it necessary to be in such a place, the hatred of uncontrollable circumstances, and the pain of taking off her wedding ring just to pay the rent cut deep into her faith in the future, and the loneliness of losing in a battle. The few dollars handed over the counter would soon be gone to get through another month, but the separation from memories of past better days would linger every time she would feel the nakedness of the third finger on her left hand. Another small paycheck from another menial task finally came in the mail. At least the post office didn't cost anything to bring a little good news, along with a lot of the usual past due statements and threats of lawsuits if you didn't pay by Friday. If only losing the key to the box could be a good enough excuse to never see that stuff again. Even looking back at grand houses, new cars and exotic travel couldn't muster even a spark of hope for the days ahead. He was sure that there was a tunnel, or more like a funnel, with that proverbial light at the end not even, not even in sight now, and not even expected. Sitting down to beans and cornbread and teaching a precious grandbaby to say grace turned into such a test just to be thankful. God is great, God is good, is much easier said than believed. Besides, it was the only words that could be muttered without much thought, and the baby was learning. What happened to that wonderful feeling of knowing that God was in the middle of every circumstance, taking care of His children through temporary downtimes? Where was that assurance that no matter what, there was always a way to overcome inner loneliness and spiritual desperation? Why wasn't the Bible speaking loudly with doses of healing and wholeness in such a sick and shattered existence? Maybe there really was an end. This is it. Just get used to it. She pulled a red cardboard box out of the closet for yet another December celebration. For just a little while, the smell of past year's trees wafted into the air, and the collection of ornaments from special places drew pictures in her memory of little trips that brought eternal adventures back to mind. With that little tin space needle from Seattle, there it was again, the aroma of coffee on the street, the fishiness of the market, the majesty of Mount Rainier, and the briskness kept away by walking hand in hand through the midst of a northwestern drizzle on a cold night. There were Christmas trees all lit up along the boulevards. There was a devoted love of the experience and for each other. In the bottom of the box was the adornment from the Reagan Library, reminding her of them dragging a little pickup truck across the country behind a U-Haul headed for California. The enchiladas in Juarez, walking down the movie Western Streets in Old Tucson, and the first weekend of trying to figure out the freeways, all touching a heartstring of excitement unwrapping packages in Bermuda shorts and bundling up to spend a few hours of a white Christmas at Lake Arrowhead before returning to the warm were pictures that could never be erased. Every ornament had its story to go along with the sparkling colors and flashing lights in the middle of troublesome times and those memories never dim. God was there and they never even had to look for him. The electricity had been turned off again until payday came. The phone was a luxury rather than a right, and simple southern cooking was not a cuisine. It was survival. Christmas was coming again, and there was no money to buy gifts for one another. She had put an inexpensive watch on layaway for him several months before, and he just got buried in the worry and embarrassment of not being able to buy a small present for her. The tree had a few presents under it sent by their children who had their own special day with their own children planned hundreds of miles away. 
She managed somehow to make a fantastic Eve dinner with ham, sweet potatoes covered in chopped pecans, divinity, and cookies with smiling Santa faces that temporarily relieved his furrowed brows of uncontrollable inner anger and his childhood memories of frustration and faithless holidays. His attempt to be of good cheer was going well, but there was still that gnawing pain of not quite being part of the party. A couple of days before Christmas Day, a package was left on the front stoop of the apartment. It wasn't fancy. With its big letters of, do not open until December 25th, handwritten in black marks a lot across the top, Along the side of the box was imprinted Auric for the vacuum cleaner, the box's original intent. It looked a bit out of place under the Christmas tree with the little gifts from the kids. Nothing to get excited about. Let's just get through this day and life will go on, was his attitude. At about 1 a.m. in the early hours of Christmas Day, the couple slouched on the floor and decided to go ahead and open the brown box. After all, it was officially Christmas. There inside were several small packages wrapped in bright colored papers addressed to the grandbaby, daughter, and one for each of them. A bright American flag adorned a new coffee mug reminding him that he believed the slogan imprinted on it, God bless America. Beneath the baby's package, there was a dainty round box destined for her that not only was thoughtfully picked out for her by its giver, but was a simple word of promise and direction arriving at just the right time for just the right reason. Trust in the Lord with all your heart was scripted around a petite teacup. They looked at each other with tears in their eyes and simultaneously knew that love came in a vacuum cleaner box this year. And Jesus is truly born today again in our house. Well, the hard financial times would be fought away in the coming year for these two. She would get a new wedding ring for a better marriage. They would see better days and adventures down the road, drawn closer together for going through this tough meanness of an earthly life experience and growing into an applied love for one another in their future. Every Christmas from then on will be a thankful day of good food, a few laughs at how temporary the worst of times were, and a special prayer and thought of how the love of unselfish friends who sent a package, and their love in a time when it fit perfectly, filling a God-shaped void in the lives of two ordinary people who needed it. Merry Christmas to you all. I'll see you tomorrow again on the Norm at Noon Show and hope that your day will be blessed immensely to think about not just the bad times but the good times and to remember it's all about a baby. And the stories are all about you. We'll see you tomorrow.